doc that I wanted to talk about today is Tattooed Chef, which is a plant-based frozen food company that actually got crushed uh, where I think it went from $22 to around $17 after their Q2 earnings conference call last week. I am an investor of Tattooed Chef for the long term and have no plans on selling any of my shares for a very long time at this point so far. So on their Q2 earnings call, their revenue increased by 45.9% from 34.8 million to 50.7 million compared to 2020 Q2. But the more important thing in my opinion, since they have announced that they are focusing 75 to 80% on direct selling rather than private labeling now, is that their Tattooed Chef branded product revenue increased by 62.3% from 20.4 million to 33.1 million compared to the prior year. In the food and beverage industry, I think 62% is a very high percentage comparing with the other companies in this sector. Also, their growth profit was 8 million compared to 3.7 million in 2020. Now, the major issue that came up was the net loss of $53.2 million compared to a net income of $1.3 million in the prior year. But they also mentioned that the loss included a one-time non-cash expense of $46 million resulting from a valuation allowance on a deferred tax asset due to additional investments, which also means that this is not an incurring event, but was just for this year. Also, another important thing to keep in mind, in my opinion, is that Tattoo Chef is not a value stock, but is a growth company or a growth stock. And in the beginning of any growth stocks or companies, it's not uncommon to have net losses as they focus more on expanding partnership and scaling their products globally. Again, in my opinion, as long as they keep expanding partners and increase their products in the retail stores, I don't mind these net losses on some conference calls, but pay more attention on their progress in partnerships, which I'm very happy with on what Tattoo Chef has been doing so far. Being in well-known retail stores such as Walmart, Costco, Sam's Club, Trader Joe's, Whole Food, and Target. And they were also mentioned by Target that Tattoo Chef's launch was the most successful frozen food launch in the history of Target and have exciting plans to continue sales with the Target guess. They also have a ton of products in the pipeline getting ready to be launched. And I think it may be possible that they might come out with a non-frozen product line, which would be an amazing stream of income or revenue for the company if that happens. So I think it's a matter of time until they become scalable globally in all these retail stores, which then will become a major player in this sector, in my opinion. I personally think that definitely they are doing a very good job. On their outlook for the rest of the year, the company expects the revenue range of $235 million to $242 million, which is an increase of approximately 58 to 63% compared to 2020. And they also think that their products will be in over 12,000 retail stores, exceeding the previous goal that was getting into 10,000 stores in the uh, starting of this year. I do expect that the price can go more lower or it could be volatile, but I am personally comfortable with the position that I have in Tattoo Chef. And last week when the stock actually hit around $17, I didn't buy more stores stocks, but I actually bought some call options with the expiration date of 2022 December, I'm expecting that the company will definitely recover regarding the prices by then. So that's my update and opinion on a tattoo Jeff. So today we're going to continue on with kind of the theme that brought up last time with go with what you know. And we talked about the Polaris Incorporated and, and the side-by-sides in that business. And as I got to thinking about that, I, I started thinking about what else do I see that is trending and what can I look into? So I do, I live in the country, been out here for over 20 years. So my experience with the company I'm going to talk about is interesting because it's, it's something that people in the country go see. And I've noticed lately since the pandemic that the parking lot is less full of pickup trucks and, and has SUVs and cars in it. So the company I want to talk about is Tractor Supply company, which is under the NASDAQ of symbol ticker TSCO. Tractor Supply is, a, is an interesting company and it's been around for a while. They have over 1,900 stores and they, they just don't work on tractors. They have basically a lot of everything, mowers and boots and generators and side-by-sides and tents and feed for animals and hay, tree, 
CDs, toys, a very diversified kind of store. And, and here in the Midwest and around the country, and if you live in the country, you spend a lot of time at Tractor Supply as opposed to uh, Home Depot or, or Lowe's. And I noticed that, you know, one of the effects of the pandemic was that people moved more into the suburbs and from what I understand and into acreages and in the county and in the country. So again, I started noticing the different kinds of people showing up at TFCO. So we wanted to dig a little deeper and just see what Tractor Supply is and how they're doing financially and whether it's a, it's worth investing in. Let's talk about Tractor Supply a little bit. 52-week price range is $128 to about a little over $200. Current price is $193.92. Tractor Supply operates as a rural lifestyle retailer in the United States. The company offers a selection of merchandise, including equine, livestock, pet, and small animal products necessary for their health, care, and growth, and containment, hardware, truck towing, tool products, seasonal products such as heating products, lawn and garden items, power equipment, gifts, and toys, work recreational clothing and footwear, and maintenance products for agricultural and rural uses. In 2020, the revenue was $10.6 billion with a gross profit of $3.7 billion and an EPS return of $7.66 per share. Their current PE is about 25.8. So not too pricey for a retail store. The friends from Seeking Alpha, when we look forward to earnings estimates for 2020, it was $10.6 billion. 2021, they're looking at $12.2 billion with an EPS of $7.70 to $8. And that's an upgrade from TSCO from their latest quarter. 2022, $12.6 billion. 2023, $13.3 billion with a P of 21 and earnings per share estimated at $8.5. So you can see that it's a growing company in sales, growing company in EPS, uh, projected out. And if you go back five years, you can see that it also grew. So if you look at earnings revisions, they have 26 analysts at Seeking Alpha, and all 26 have revised their earnings up on this company. The average price target was about a little over $201.69, and the high of the analyst was $220 coming up, so a little bit higher than it is today. Dividend yields about 1.11%. Uh, annual payouts, $2.08, 52 cents this quarter. That's up 46 cents from last year. So they're increasing dividends, which is good. They're making sales and their uh, sales are going up, which is good. Their market cap, $21.4 billion. Enterprise value is $23.8 billion. So if you broke up this company right today, based on the enterprise value, it'd bring about $153 a share. So it's trading over that. Not that they're going to break up. Ownership institutions, 92% institutions own this company. So uh, they're very well entrenched in tractor supply. Short interest is only 5%. And over the last 52 weeks, uh, stock price has gained about 27%. Instead of going back historically, I'm just going to go with the second quarter. Retail got hit with the pandemic pretty hard. But so you had a lot of competition from online sales. But with people moving to the country and into suburbs, tractor supply really went through the process very well. People were at home working on their yards, working on their house, working on everything. And, and one of the places they went to was tractor supply. So if you look at the second quarter earnings results, that sales increased. Uh, a little over 13% to $3.6 billion from $3.1 billion in quarter two of 2020. Comparable store sales, uh, that's the sales from year to year from the same stores that were up 10.5%. And they experienced a record sales quarter in the second quarter for e-commerce. So their e-commerce is up also. Gross profit increased 11% from $1.29 billion to $1.16 billion. Gross margin decreased 67 basis points, which isn't all that much, to 35.8% from 36.4% due to higher transportation costs, which everybody is seeing if you go to the gas station today. Uh, they announced a dividend of $0.53 cents for the quarter. So TSCO increased its full year 2021 earnings guidance to $7.70 cents to eight dollars a share share repurchases for, for 2021 are expected to be about 700 to 800 million dollars so they're repurchasing their shares they're giving out a, a dividend and their gross sales and net sales are increasing current cash and cash equivalents of 41.41 billion with 500 million dollars in revolving credit that they're not using so it's sitting there if they do need that money and during the first six months of 2021 the company opened 32 new tfc stores and three new pet set stores so they're opening more stores also so instead of showing you uh, the balance sheet and the assets and cash flow i kind of created this table here just to kind of show you the 
trends uh, and some of the things that I look at from 2016 to 2020. Net sales, you can see increasing every year from 6.7 billion to 10.6 billion. Gross profit, 2.3 billion up to 3.7 billion. Operating income, or 694 million to 996 million. Net income, 437 to 748. Net income per share, you can see $3.27, continually growing to $6.38. Uh, weighted average shares, you can see that the number of shares went from 133 million to 117 million. So they're reducing the amount of shares, which increases your ownership. And dividend per share, you can see from 92 cents to $1.50. And now they've increased that for 2021 also. So these are the kind of things that I like in a stock. I know it's not fancy, it's not exciting, but it is a company that's growing, uh, returning money to the shareholders increasing the value of your shares by buying back shares. The stock's up about you know, 30% in the past 52 weeks. At the current price of $193, it's above the nine-day SMA of $189. It's above the 50-day. The RSI is about 64, so it's not totally overbought or oversold. So if you were wanted to invest in a company like a tractor supply, you know, do your own due diligence, find a price that you like to, to get in at, uh, and it'd be a nice long-term hold, in my opinion.